Job done. Very nice. Finally made it to the secret island, as you've probably guessed. And a uh, quick look around camp. Um, there's so much dry and dead standing around here that there's very few people obviously come here, as I've said before. Inside the Levu, I've got my um, ground sheet and my foil tucked in underneath my uh, Dutch bivy bag. And I've got an inflatable mattress. Uh, and then I've got a, a fairly good sleeping bag, so it should be very warm, a nice high area for the head at night. So I don't anticipate any problems sleeping here tonight. And what's interesting is there's a rainstorm forecast for about midnight, so uh, no doubt uh, it'll be fun to listen to that pitter-pattering on the canvas uh, of the Lavu. Now, I'm going to let you into something else. Uh, I'm not alone, as you might have guessed. Uh, when I told the family that I was thinking of doing my first stop over um, in the Lavu, word got round, and they all wanted to be part of this. So they've all come along with their own tents. And so we have a communal cuckoo area over this side of the hidden secret island. And so we've got three sleep areas. And... Uh, Got one hammock here for for Douglas. Douglas is uh, been really looking forward to camping in this arrangement here. This is his room. As you can see, he's well organised. Uh, very impressed with his arrangement. A nice cosy uh, six degrees down to minus six for season type sleeping bag. So you should be able to unzip if it gets too warm. But then it can get quite cold in August when the the weather changes in this part of Scotland. So that's his accommodation, very nicely done. And now we'll, I'll take you along to the uh, the communal cooking area and let you see the, the other members of the family. So this is Graeme and Sam cooking dinner. And uh, what make of tent is this, Graeme? Um, it's a Vango. Vango, yeah. Two man. A Vango Helix. A Vango Helix, be ideal for mountain use because the lower end would face the storm. And it's got very strong guy ties, three of them actually at the storm end. And the space is quite substantial. And uh, on the sheltered end, room for a trangia uh, or gas stove uh, for cooking breakfast, having survived the night. So it's really spacious. I'll let you see inside. Look at that, massive inside. You can get a double mattress in there, fantastic space, inflatable pillow. Uh, yeah, they, they really uh, know what they're doing, these guys. Now, this is actually looking quite good. So we've actually cleaned up quite a bit here. 70 grand. Yeah, 140 yeah. grand. Spent on it now, right. it's new hammers and all this sort of stuff put on it. And of course there's the obligatory headlamp, which uh, has three settings, the red, uh, which is rather nice, and um, of course for outside, powerful, so you don't walk into any branches if you're moving around in the, in the forest at night, uh, super setting, then back to red. So uh, can you hear the wind? up. It's fantastic. And very warm in here. I don't feel any drafts. It was getting quite cool outside, uh, so I decided to retire, although it is quite late now. We've put all, we've put all our fires out and we're all secure in our accommodations, and we're going to try and get seven or eight hours sleep if we're lucky. And I think it's to be pretty wet from about one o'clock in the morning right through to midday. Uh, so we're going to have to strike camp uh, with our waterproofs, have a quick brew and head off. 
But what a lovely sound. The wind softening the trees. Sheltered in the vues. I just, I just really like this thick canvas. You really do feel quite cosy. It doesn't get much better than this. What? Electricity inside a lavu? It's a £1.50 uh, solar powered uh, light bulb which you went to hang in the trees in your garden. I thought, oh, what a novelty. I think I got it in yeah, Sainsbury's it was. You really do feel in a lavu that there's lots of space. And uh, that will stay on overnight and just give a very small candlelight. Do you know there's something really, really nice and calming in this space? Uh, it's absolutely fantastic. One of the good things about um, camping in a pine forest uh, is you get very short grass even with summer. And uh, the pine needles are underneath the grass, so you get this sort of carpet which is relatively tidy to, to operate on. A little shout out to Wilcherman, wild camper, who also liked the sound of rain hitting his lavu. He described it as a kind of soft sound compared to a normal tent. Gentle, a gentle pitter patter. And guess what? Even have a small radio, which picks up classical and pop music. Five pounds at Tesco. Uh, can't go wrong with that. So we're well equipped. Plenty of light sources. Uh, liquid uh, for once you get thirsty. And I think it's time to get my head down. And I think the best thing is just to say thank you for coming along. And uh, I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Well, good morning. Not a bad night. Got about, oh, I think, six or seven hours sleep. Rained continually. And uh, however, the Lavu, as you can see, is pretty waterlogged. But you know, I stayed dry. Um, I was really dry until maybe about, say, seven o'clock. When I woke up, there were a few drips coming in, but because I had the Dutch bivy bag, in case that would happen, um, I was wrong to assume that the lavu would keep me dry all through the night without weatherproofing. So there's a piece of advice. Don't listen to an old fool like me. You really should proof uh, your lavu before you use it. I thought by letting it take in moisture, the fibres would swell up and it would do its job. Uh, I was wrong. So I'll be getting this one dried out, and, uh, and once it's uh, dry, I'll be proofing it, and it'll be of use again. But it's been a really good experience. I enjoyed the sound of the rain in the night, and the wildlife, and the trees, and the wind through the, the tops of the trees. So the Lavu was a complete pleasure to be acquainted with. So until next time, can I wish you all a very happy, happy summer still. We're still in August, and uh, get ready for the autumn camping. Uh, it's all good fun. So inside the Lavu, as you can see, I'm packed up, ready to go. Uh, just the ground sheet will be the last thing I'll fold up. Lavu, because it's got water in it, it'll be heavy, but uh, I'll just roll it up and put it on top of the Bergen and uh, head straight for the v for uh, uh, base camp, so to speak. So from a beautiful uh, panoramic shot out to the lake, and then into the trees. I think you'll agree this secret island is a great place to be because all you have here is wildlife. In fact this morning I heard uh, uh, a woodpecker putting past and then tap 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 tap. And I can see I think evidence of it. Look, could that be? It's handiwork. I think it might be looking for insects. What else did I hear? I didn't hear any owls, but I did hear quite a lot of geese conversing with each other during the night. 
uh, on the whole it's uh, a wonderful experience to be repeated let's have a look out to the lake and see what it looks like beautiful corner of the lake here not been here before it's very isolated the island is a little peninsula it starts from the mainland part down there but it's a very narrow strip and when the water's up in the winter you can't really get here and that's why this island part is so isolated it's an amazing place so i'll be back here again let's see how uh, douglas got on he reported to me that he slept reasonably well and he was bone dry i mean incredible comfortable no condensation and he felt really you know connected with the forest during the night and you can see as he's packing up his gear under the shelter of the tarp so lots of advantages than camping this way no condensation lots of space for uh, preparing and packing up it's actually four star camping i would say no wonder it's become really popular so until next time from me and my lavu chin chin <laughs>